everybody, welcome back to the Sports Place where we talk sports and have sports debate. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe below. Leave a message and hit the notification bell. Let's get the show started. All right, so you guys are gonna have to fill me in on this because I've never played professional sports and I have yet to make it to Boston. But Boston seems to have a reputation as a racist sports town and do you think it's deserved or no? Uh, for me, I feel like it's deserved because there's been more than one instance of racism in different sports grounds. Uh, you can go to recently with the Kyrie thing. I'm going to go as much as to say as the whole NBA, because I'm going to make it broad real quick. If you look at the recent events that have happened in the NBA, they've only happened to black black males. There wasn't any white guys, no European guys. Like You would never see something like that happening to Luka Doncic. But that's just that on that. Uh, I want you guys to think about that. Uh, back to the Boston thing. Boston has been known for racism. With Kyrie recently, they have been, he said they've been called names. Like you get called the N word in the stadiums in Boston. Imagine he was a Boston player. So imagine him leaving to go into the opposition. And then imagine the things that fans will say to demean him to get it to his head. There's not much you can say to get into an athlete's head, but when you start going to, racism and family and stuff like that, that's where the guys become to get unhinged in a way. And also there was a, a even bigger thing that was crazy at a Boston Red Sox games with a guy named uh, Adam Jones. He was in the, uh, the center field and a fan decided to throw a banana at him. And I don't, I shouldn't have to go into detail what it mean by you throwing a banana at a black person. We're often compared to monkeys and apes and stuff like that because we're brutes and other things but that's unacceptable and it happened in boston so boston has the reputation of doing things like that and also you got to realize boston as a whole not even just with athletes with regular people you can have instances of racism there and it's crazy because you guys love these players so much you love these guys making money for your teams in your town but you would never give them respect as the human being that they are acknowledge their skin tone and acknowledge them as a human being. It was never going to be that way. And that's sad because at the end of the day, these guys are bringing so much faith and growth to your city. Think about the Boston Red Sox with uh, Big Poppy. Like he's one of the biggest staples in their league. And he's technically a black man. He may be Brazilian or whatever. He's a black man. And you guys love him so much. But at the end of the day, you would never love him as a human being. You would love him as a player but never as a human being. And that's not right and it's not fair. If black people were to stop playing sports for these teams and create their own leagues, it would be a problem, right? We're separating ourselves and you think you're better than us. No, we just wanna be treated with respect at the end of the day, treated as human beings. So definitely Boston is a racist town. It's, 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 it's proof in the pudding. If you guys wanna go out and do a little research yourselves, <clears throat> all our fans out there, I encourage you to do so. Because they're not just spewing things from the mouth just to make things seem cool. There are many instances where you can find racism in sports in Boston. And then you want to go down the line and find out some more history, racism towards just people, period. But give yourself a history lesson. I'm not going too much detail about everything. But the proof is in the pudding. Boston has definitely had many instances of being a racist town. Bimmy, let me know what you're thinking, man. Well, actually, hold on for a second, because one thing that you said that when I was doing research before we talked about this, I did notice, and I don't know who the player was, it might have been more than one, but they said that they never received any racial name calling or whatever from the from the fans while they were playing for the Celtics. But mm -hmm. when they came back from an opposing team, then all of a sudden they were not as welcome. So like when you're on our side, you're okay, as long as you're playing for us and winning as games. But when you're not here for us anymore, then it seems to be a whole different story. I just wanted to add that up real quick. So that means go ahead. That's, going, that's definitely how it is in the sports world, whether it's racism or just hatred of a player because they chose to change team. But 90% 90 of the time, it wasn't even the team, player's choice to go to these teams. And like, it's like, business is business. Mm -hmm. Business and like, business, you gotta separate business and pleasure. Yes, it's a pleasure you, you watching me play and be a part of this team, but at the same time, Maybe your organization is the treatment with respect that I need or deserve. And people don't understand that. If you have a job that you hate in real life, you're allowed to leave. You're allowed to relocate for your own health. But like I said, when it comes to people getting paid to do things like this, 
they feel like, oh, you, it's, it's not that bad. It can't be that bad. A million dollars make everything better, but no, it doesn't. At the end of the day, I still struggle with mental issues and mental struggles every day. And you can't help me. You don't care to help me because all you care about me, bouncing the ball, catching the ball, throwing the ball. Whether it's any sport, it's not just basketball, football, baseball, any sport. I'm, I'm sure there's racism in cricket. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just have to be able to find it. Like I said, if you guys want to do your own research, I, I encourage you to. But this is in no way this is a bash from Boston. We're just pointing out some things that have been as facts at the end of the day. It's out there for you to see. It's out there for the world to see. You can't be mad at me for bringing light to it. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, because so with, is 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 Boston? A, you know, a racist city. You know, I, I, I'm gonna piggyback everything that you said, say around everything that you said, Erica. Because you know, I, you know, I kind of like to be upfront with all my answers, and you know, the short answer is yes, but not really a but. There's a there's reasons, and um, and you know, Bill Russell wrote in his in his memoir how you know Boston is a flea market for racism. Um, there was a, a lot of a lot of money being money being changed uh, changing hands through. Um, a lot of legal stuff um because i'm gonna go this route because this what really kept people down and perpetuated the the, the cycles in boston you know you have a uh, mob figurehead like whitey bulger who really ran like the construction and the mob and a lot of money was flowing through him and it was being sucked out of communities of color and you know placed in other communities for plenty of different illegal things legal things but it really created a drain. And when you go to the Boston hoods, everything I'm saying is anecdotal because I have friends in Boston. I've been in Boston. There's always a vibe. There is a vibe that you get as a black man walking through Boston that, yo, yo it, it's, it's, it's. You, know, you feel unwanted. It. You feel unwanted. Yeah, you feel unwanted. Part of, part of it's like almost revolutionary. And the other part of it's like, yo, watch your back. Um, it's, and I know that people in Boston can attest to this because there's specific parts that you can go to um, and there's specific parts you can't go to. You can't go to H Block. Um, you can go to Jamaica. You can go to, you know, all the states and stuff like that. But there's specific blocks where it's like, what are you doing on my side of town? And, you know, it, it, it has that vibe almost all throughout the city as a black man walking through it. Um, and when you see another black person <laughs> in mass, it's like, hey, what's up? You almost, you know, you get that nod, like, okay, I'm almost counting how many of us there are. I'm taking the head count just in case somebody get lost <laughs> tonight and do a roll call and find everybody. But it does give you that vibe. And there's always that famous image of the person with the American flag inside, not inside the stadium, outside the stadium, about to stab a black man with it. Um, and and it, that picture speaks volumes. You know, uh, it's, from a personal level, this guy is literally trying to kill a black man on the street with, with the American flag. Like, this is not, it wasn't a photo shoot. This is real life. And there's so many factors that attributed to the racism in Boston that cannot be ignored, um, that can only be explored and try to be rectified. And it, and it shines through in the sports. These guys are buying, you know, Bruins, Bruins tickets and Red Sox tickets and Patriot tickets. And and it bleeds through when you see, you know, like you said, somebody leaves, leaves to go to another team and they come back and now they're all of a sudden, they're the bad guy, they're the end bomb and they're this and they're that. And when Tory Hunter said, I don't want to go to Boston, he, he had in his contract, I, I can't get traded to Boston because the, the reputation of the town and the town's only done it to itself. It can do things to change it, but it has to be proactive in it and it has to make it consistent and it has to be serious. Um, otherwise, people would, wouldn't want to play for your teams. People don't, are not going to want to visit or live in, your, live in your communities and you're going to be missing out on a lot of great people. So hopefully we're not going to... Not to cut you off real quick. Also with that, you got to realize these athletes are going to be living in the most prestigious neighborhoods too. Mm -hmm. And the most prestigious neighborhoods <laughs> usually house the most racist people. No disrespect. Not yeah. like I said, this could, this is, this is, this is my opinion. You're allowed to disagree with me, but in the day, usually the people with the most power have been ingrained that way with the same rules of society down the line. 
and they don't want to change. And I don't want you moving into my neighborhood, bringing down the property value, as they would say. You know what I'm saying? So there's definitely a lot that goes on there and a lot of mental things that you have to think about as a professional athlete going to Boston. So I definitely feel it. And the bullet, uh, there's, um, I know Big Poppy said he had a great time in Boston and Kevin Garnett, you know, defending Boston. But you got to realize that's still anecdotal because you're going to recognize Big Poppy on the street. You're going to recognize Kevin Garnett. You're not going to recognize his teammates, you know, or, you know, the bench players. And so they have a totally different experience than those guys. I'm like, yo, I didn't get that experience. Yeah, because you're seven foot in Kevin Garnett or you're big poppy. You know the gap, you know the size. And you're not going to get that level of disrespect because of what you did on the field. And if you didn't do that on the field, you would be getting that level of disrespect because people wouldn't know who you were. Um, so I think that's always a point of view that they have to realize that, just because it didn't happen to you doesn't mean it's not happening. Yes, that's that, that was well said, man. Because just because you have, doesn't ex, didn't experience it doesn't mean it's not there. You can't see oxygen, but you're still breathing, guys. <laughs> so just make sure you guys come back next. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you come Holy back God. next Next week. See you all of this. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys come back next week. As you see, it's always a party in the sports place, man. We enjoy you guys. If you watch, we enjoy being around each other, man. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Leave a comment about uh, what you feel about Boston if you want to. Let me know if you did your research and we can uh, argue back and forth if need be. But like I said, like, subscribe, comment. We love you guys, man. Enjoy your weekends. <laughs>